What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. Today I got a bit of a strange one, but it's also a very commonly asked question. And that's, what happens when you bury an entire straw bale in the garden? Today we're gonna to be finding out what happens because in the very beginning of the season, we prepped all of our beds with core gardening. Now core gardening is a method that we've fallen in love with. We've used it for about three years now and it's simply one of the best methods we've ever come across to integrate with other gardening methods, obviously. So we use raised beds in combination with core gardening. It really helps to reduce the amount of watering and maintenance that our beds need. It breaks down and gives the plants organic matter and nutrients throughout the season. It's just a phenomenal gardening method and I absolutely love it. So uh, every season, what we do is we, well, at the end of uh, every season, around Halloween and Thanksgiving, we'll go around the neighborhood and we'll pick up giant straw bales. Then we'll let them sit over winter, we'll let them rot down, break down, and then what we'll do is we'll kind of just break them off into, into sheets, like they kind of come off in strips, and we'll lay, layer them in a trench about 10 inches deep by about 12 inches wide. We'll cover it up with soil, and then we'll plant right on top of it. But last year, our local hardware store was selling these miniature straw bales, after Thanksgiving, they were just fire selling them to get rid of them, and they were selling them for a buck a, uh, a buck a bale. So I said, I wonder what's going to happen if we take an entire straw bale and bury it in the ground. Obviously, we took the wire off because that won't ever degrade, but I want to see what happens. And we have a bed back there that actually has, uh, that's ready to be pulled out, and I want to see what happened to it because uh, it was the first time we ever planted in, or we planted, it was the first time we ever buried an entire straw bale. Usually they're just little sheets. And so I'm just curious to see what's happened to it um, because it is a question that comes up all the time. You know, Luke, at the end of every season, what's left? What happens to the straw? And in our experience, it breaks down completely, but they're very thin sheets, maybe about uh, two inches thick, but they're about 12 inches by 12 inches uh, wide and tall. So it's like just a big square uh, block of it. And we'll just layer that in our trenches. And it usually completely breaks down the worms and the microbes just completely break it down over the course of a season. But this thing is huge and it's dense. It's a really big, dense block. So I'm just curious to see what happens. Let's go back to the bed and check it out. So every single bed that you can see here, every single bed has core gardening implemented in it. That's a 10 inch deep by about 12 inch wide trench that we filled with rotted straw and then covered back up and planted on top of it. Every single bed has that running through it. So the only thing different with this bed where we're at versus all the other beds is this bed had whole straw bales put in it. We took those miniature straw bales, we got six of them, and we basically lined the center of this bed with them. Now we did have to dig the trenches a little bit deeper because of the fact that the straw bales are a little bit wider and a little bit taller than just putting sheets of straw in there. So normally we dig about 10 inches deep. However, these trenches, we had to dig about 13 to 14 inches deep so that we had enough soil on top to still grow in. Um, because otherwise we just have straw showing on top and that would, you couldn't plant in that. So uh, we just dug them super deep, put the, uh, the whole straw bales in minus the, the wire wrapping obviously, cause that wouldn't break down. And uh, we have not touched it since. So I'm super curious to see what happened. You're gonna get a first look with me and uh, we'll just see what happens. So uh, they should be right about here. And since I still have zucchini growing, I don't wanna disturb that and I have beans over there. So we're just gonna see what happened in this strip right here. All right, so this should be out far enough for where they were at. All right, let's see what happened. No way. I don't think I see any straw at all right there. Oh my goodness, you guys. There's not a single bit of straw left in here. Every single bit of straw has broken down over just the course of a single season. This is wild. And dig a little deeper, see if there's any left down there. I can see some little bits of like just tiny remnants of straw, but not big pieces. There's just like little, little fragments of straw that were more or less on the surface that just didn't break down. That's crazy. Yeah, check this out. So as you can see, we dug this trench about as deep as we had originally dug it and there is absolutely nothing left. It's just beautiful black soil. Now our native soil was a mixture of perlite and compost, but you can see there's absolutely nothing left. It's just completely broken down. 
Now, one of the things I was really curious to see is if we could see any remains of straw at all. I mean, I figured some would have broken down. I did not think all of it would have broken down just because of how much I put in here. But just digging through here, you can see, I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's just broken down and there's just nothing left of it. I mean, all I see is just plant roots that would have gone in here, but there's absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing left. I'm just gonna keep digging down this trench here to see if there's anything at all. Oop, I do see a tiny little bit of straw here, just a little bit. Let's see if we get into some, that might not have broken down as much. Let's see what it looks like, Let's see how much there is. All right, so digging down, just a lot of broken down stuff. There's some right here, just a little bit. It's not, you know, it's not really that much. So this is all I could really find that was like nice whole pieces where you could identify that it was straw. So, I mean, like that's it. That's all I could pretty much find. Um, there's tiny little fragments. Like I said, there's a little bit more right there. There's a little bit more, oh, there's some over here, a little bit, but I mean, that's it. So there's your answer. That is what happens when you bury an entire straw bale in the garden. That is just astounding. I mean, that is like almost nothing left from an entire straw bale. We put six, we lined this whole bed with six of them and there's nothing left. But that, that is astounding. And even these are like almost ready. I mean, like they're, oh geez, they're just like, look at that. They're just completely disintegrating. They're just like punky and like just breaking down like almost nothing. I mean, they probably would have broken down in the next month had they, had they stayed in the soil. I mean, they're just, yeah, they're just deteriorating. That is crazy. So I think the obvious answer to our question of what happens when you bury a straw bale in the garden it completely breaks down. It completely breaks down and turns into organic matter for your plants. And there's no ill effects to adding what would be deemed as maybe too much or overkill amounts. I mean, we really thought there'd be some straw left. And yes, there definitely was some straw. But I mean, we're talking like maybe a tenth of a percent of what we originally put in. So, I mean, yes, there's still some straw left over at the end of the season, but nothing that would have any ill effects on the soil and certainly nothing that uh, didn't help the soil overall and have a net benefit. Um, so I guess the other question that we always get asked is, can you add too much? And I guess that's also been answered. I don't think you can really add too much straw to your cores. Obviously this is important that we state this. I think it's really, really important to start with good quality soil. And we started with compost to begin with. So that's a really good microbe and fungi rich environment to help aid that degradation process of the straw. So, I mean, if you're starting with like potting mix or topsoil that could be void of those microbes and bacteria, you might not have as much um, decomposition of your straw cores. But in our case, you know, with a really good uh, kind of a starter base that's already added, I, do, I don't think you can add too much. And that's really incredible because I mean, seriously, we added that entire bale that you saw, six of them all the way down. And I thought for sure that I'd have even, even a little bit left that might've been like the center of the straw bale, like the center core that, uh, the core of the core, I should say, um, that just hadn't broken down yet. And there was like that much. That's so cool to see how fast nature takes its toll on, uh, on organic matter and how fast things just wanna consume uh, you know, biomass, it's just phenomenal. And not to mention, I mean, I cannot even tell you how much beautiful soil was built during this process. We took a waste product or what was going to be a waste product and turned it into food for our plants and, you know, uh, basically a water reservoir for our, for our plants to use up. And not to mention too, look at this. I mean, we're talking, look at all of the life in the beds. I mean, they're just, the beds are loaded with worms, they're loaded with just so much goodness. I can see like already, I can already see probably five, six, seven earthworms just like wriggling on the surface where I just turned them over. And so, I mean, this is just an environment that they can call home. 
it's such a phenomenal thing. And so uh, I'd recommend giving it a shot. I recommend uh, at least using core gardening. I'm not saying dig, a, you know, put a whole straw bale in your garden. That might not be possible for you. But I am saying implement core gardening in some way, shape, or form into your garden because I really, truly think you're going to see some huge benefits. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I hope you were inspired to try a different gardening method. And if you're interested in core gardening, make sure you check out uh, our, um, our whole video series that we've done on core gardening. We've done quite a few videos on how to set it up and what is it and th those different types of things, the origins of it. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're inspired to check it out. So, all right, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. We'll catch you all on tomorrow's episode. Grow big or go home. Bye.